Okay. Yeah. So hello everyone. Uh, my name is Deepak. Uh, I'm a quality engineering manager in Red Hat. And with me is Jalak. Uh, she leads the Red Hat customer portal search quality engineering efforts and everything that goes with it. And our second guest who is still uh, trying to find a way through the Hopin app uh, is Swapnil. He leads the uh, QE efforts for our internal uh, integration platform called Hydra. So he's uh, more of a mid-tier person and Jalak is uh, more of a solar. Oh, here, here is Sapnit. Hello, Sapnit. Hey, hi. Am I audible? Yes, yes. I Hello. You. Hello. Hello, guys. Hello, all. Sorry for being like, there were some issues for connecting to Hopping. So I hope no, I don't miss okay. anything. <laughs> that's OK. Uh, OK. So again, welcome to Ask the Experts panel uh, for the software quality assurance track. and. Uh, uh, we hope you enjoy. So it is going to be a very interactive uh, session. So I'll probably ask uh, Swapnil and Jalak to introduce themselves first. And let's see. Yes. Uh, let's hello, start with everyone. Jalak first. Thanks, Deepak. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm Jalak. And uh, I've been associated with Red Hat from around uh, from past two years. And I'm working. Uh, uh, as a senior software quality engineer in Red Hat. Uh, looking forward to talk to you, everyone here. Thanks. Swapnil, over to you. Hey, hello, Chalak. Hello, Deepak. Hello, everyone. So I'm Swapnil Chado. I'm QE lead at uh, Red Hat. I've been associated with Red Hat for close to three years now. Uh, mostly, I'm interested, like, uh, my area of interest are specifically in the automation, specifically the microservice automations or any of the API automation performance testing. So those are my area of interest. And uh, this topic is really interesting. And I'm looking to share my views and hear your all views as well on this topic. So yeah, really excited yeah. for it. Thank you, Swapnil. So everyone who is hearing us please uh, type in your questions during the event as well it's not a presentation so that you have to wait for the end just if you if at any point of time you feel like asking a question just uh, type it in i'll read it out to our guests and uh, we'll try to see what their views are on on that topic all right so starting uh, in the beginning let's start with uh, building a fence around what psychological safety is right uh, let's let's start with uh, Swapnil this time. Swapnil, what do you think? What is your idea of psychological safety? Um, so we see it has two words like psychology and the safety. When we talk about the safety, it's, it's it gives you a safety net wherein you can you are safe in that zone. You can make mistakes. You can uh, you know do mistakes. You can learn from those mistakes. So basically, psychological safety for me is something wherein I have the freedom to uh, to be heard of or uh, to be making mistakes and still not being worried about being punished or being penalized for those my opinions or questions so yeah that is what the psychology safety means for me excellent Yalak? um so for me uh, uh, we can say that it it is it is a shared belief where uh, which is held by the members of the team and the uh, others on the teams where uh, you do not uh, feel to be uh, to be embarrassed, rejected, or punished for speaking up. Now consider a situation: uh, yourself being at home, you you are just yourself, and you be you be very comfortable. So similarly, should be the situation when you are at office. P uh, people should feel comfortable uh, of being themselves. They should be bringing their full selves to work, and uh, it should also allow for an honest honest discussion about results. So the results could be good or bad. So what what whatever takeaways could be. So mm -hmm. this is uh, what uh, psychological safety mean to me. Nice. Just be okay. yourself. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, talking about this particular problem, right? Psychological safety for testers. So historically speaking, uh, if you go back, let's say, 20 years into software development, when when we had this uh, old school uh, waterfall model, testers were mostly a support group. Uh, who would be included at the end to validate whatever was built was working fine and then uh, give a sign off and then so that they could release those uh, golden CDs to, to the public, right? So it, it's very recently that line between a developer and a software is blurring, which is good, right? But still, uh, still see something which is very uh, deep rooted uh, stays in our unconscious point, right? So, do you think that? Do you think that, uh, given given the fact that uh, testers have always been considered a support group, and some 
some critics will even go to the extent of calling testers uh, the second class citizens of software development right so in in that sense in that sense do you think that it is uh, it is highly uh, important for whoever runs whoever is running the team okay it can be a product manager or a project manager or or a po or anyone or an engineering manager right who is who is the directly control of uh, taking decisions in the team uh, is it uh, is it important for them to properly uh, take care of these things right uh, that uh, testers don't feel left out they feel included so uh, so my question is uh, for sapnil sapnil do you think that psychological safety as a concept applies more to testers in a in a development team um yes deep like uh, i definitely agree with this like wherein uh, testers uh, this concept specifically applies to testers more basically whenever we hire a tester or any the qa engineer on our team what are the qualities that we look for we look for the critical thinking we look for inclusiveness we look for the collaboration with other teams so these are the basic um, things or the basic attributes that we look in the testers whenever we hire them and all these attributes of a qa testers they are quite closely related to the psychological safety if a qa testers or any of the qa is not safe enough like he is it doesn't feel or willing to ask uh, you know really hard questions stakeholders or business analyst or your developers definitely the quality would impact if if all the soft questions are being asked definitely uh, the quality of your software isn't going to be that great so definitely this concept is uh, really applicable to testers they should be free to ask the questions however silly it may sound however silly the question may be but they should have this platform they should have this freedom of asking this question they shouldn't be uh, just or rather uh, you know mocked for the simple questions because they might not bring the they might not have the technical um, you know the back background which the developers have for you know for developing those applications but they bring in the perspective of the customers they bring in the ideas or the vision of the customers to for that particular application so they see the application from the customers point of view so if mm -hmm. they are given this freedom only then they will be able to ask uh, questions to the developers business owner project manager and that's how it will indirectly help the entire team so yeah mm -hmm. so you are saying that uh, they they have to be given some kind of freedom right yeah right so jalak what do you think what are what are the steps uh, that that we need to take uh, to get uh, psychological safety for testers in the team so uh, by now we understand how important it is to have a psychological safe uh, environment in our workplace so there are few hacks or few steps that uh, we, we can share with you uh, to see how we can have a psychological safe uh, workplace uh first is uh, we should be meeting each other's needs so uh, now when you're interacting with your team members you need to be uh, conscious of their preferences too often uh, you know managers make decisions without even consulting their uh, consulting their direct reports so we need to figure out what your employees want in terms of communication style or uh, one on one meetings or feedbacks so uh, so that you care for uh, sh show that uh, we actually care for them and uh, this is how uh, uh we can bring some amount of psychological safety also uh, when when you have taken their feedback uh, uh, make sure that you follow up and uh, uh, was that feedback fruitful for them because uh, the requirements or uh, the mindset of the people keep changing then um, uh, other thing could, could be uh, you know you have to uh, the trust trust is the key of psychological safety you have to establish and build trust so uh, you, you need to strengthen and employ trust uh, when you have gained trust people uh, are comfortable being themselves and uh, um, believe me uh, if you have gained an employee's trust you uh, the uh, there could be a, a healthy employer or manager relationship employees mm -hmm. who trust their managers are more committed more productive and then they communicate better so building a strong workplace culture which is rooted in trust uh, is more important than ever um the other point i would bring in here is uh, uh you know uh, go for the appreciation go for frequent appreciations uh, we all uh, like to be uh, we all like to get appreci appreciated right so uh, mm -hmm. in in a survey it showed that uh, around 93% of the employees wanted to be uh, recognized uh, quarterly at least uh, if not more frequently so mm -hmm. uh, people value recognition from both their managers and peers be it uh, genuine personal or meaningful so uh, 
though recognition costs nothing but then uh, it can have major consequences if not done so uh, make sure that you are uh, appreciating your uh, uh, appreciating your team members frequently mm -hmm. uh, next one is uh, show empathy now uh, consider the situation when you are putting yourself in somebody else's shoes though mm -hmm. it takes time to understand the person but then it pays off in speeds listen to people and then acknowledge acknowledge their thoughts when employees show empathy towards each other they're more likely to continue collaborating in the future mm -hmm. Here, uh, now, nowadays what the, what the issues are that people do not collaborate or people do not speak up but then they should be feeling very comfortable in speaking up they should be knowing that their decisions would be respected right their decisions mm -hmm. would be acknowledged when people do not speak they do not speak out of fear so mm -hmm. uh, next is uh, include them in uh, include them in decision making make sure that you uh, make them feel valued that their their decisions are being valued and how important their decisions are collaborate mm -hmm. with your team when 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 we are making decisions so more and more input uh, would give you, give you a good feedback and then this is a great way to involve everyone uh, it's a gather uh, gather continuous feedback and then review it as a team to build collaborative mm -hmm. action plans mm -hmm. so this is how uh, i think uh, we can uh, these steps can help build a strong uh, psychological safe environment mm -hmm. okay so one what i gather from your points is that uh, the essence is that every person is unique right the management needs to let them assert their individuality right so some people are on left side of the introvert extrovert spectrum right and some people are on the right side plus this is a spectrum right there is this is not this is not a binary thing right yes or no so right okay so uh, so but the things uh, the points that you mentioned jalak are very generic for every employee right so what 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 is that special thing about testers that that you think should be there how can we fix it for testers especially i think we need to be uh, very vocal uh, you know uh, our job is being uh, is it tells us to be very vocal uh, speak out uh, so i I'll, i'll give you an example so uh, in the past there has been a tragic incident where you know um, a boeing uh, a, a boeing jet uh, a boeing it was crashed because uh, uh, as per the design that the ba gave um, Uh, that the ba gave uh, was overburdened and because of which the, uh, the, the, the a lot of lives were uh, were were destroyed mm -hmm. so the pressure to keep the plane on schedule overrode uh, designers concern uh, and uh, this uh, because of which the uh, the jet jet safety was not met so mm -hmm. this led to two crashes and then uh, around 346 deaths and thousands of planes were grounded after that incident now mm -hmm. uh, so so uh, engineers knew that uh, the shuttles were doomed but they were afraid to say anything to the management because uh, they mm -hmm. they were afraid of the con consequences how how would the people react but they mm -hmm. could not say and and, and since it is uh, at, at that point of time they were being not vocal this led to such a big tragic incident mm -hmm. now consider put yourself in that situation if this would have happened to you so whatever the result may be good or bad it 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 is required to be vocal you know the qa people are uh, seen as the gatekeepers of uh, of any application they, they criticize they point out the weak points so it's been for us it's been an easier and harder time both but then yeah uh, it's a job of doing that perhaps and it requires a larger sense of psychological safety to dare to speak you you have to dare to speak uh, no matter what the consequences may be mm -hmm. So don't consider okay. it what 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 the people may think because uh this can they can take it as a criticism but then yeah this is our job and we have to uh do it. Okay, excellent. Okay, a quick time check. We have eleven minutes and a quick audience check. Uh, anyone has any questions so far? Uh, just feel free to write them down in the chat section or the Q A section. Okay, so Sapnil, my next question for you. Let's say I put you in charge of finding out. There is a team out there, right? Uh, let's say inside Red Hat, uh, a team that is working iteratively to deliver software to their stakeholders or customers, whatever. I put you in charge of as a spy to detect whether this the uh, 
let's find out the maturity of the psychological safety in this team right mm -hmm. so right. what would be your markers your your cues to detect that psychological safety right. level right um so deepak this is really an interesting question so like there is one old saying that says like don't shoot the messenger but that is not exactly mm -hmm. happening right now today what is happening the person who is raising the issue has been shot right there itself like that is what is happening as of now so um, in psychological safety let's say there are two teams that we have one is actually following the psychological safety and it is you know it's well uh, bounded with each other and another team which is not well you know uh, they are not well gelled with each other so uh, there has been a couple of research done and like let's say if we have to parameterize a couple of things if we have to see like whether particular following the safety uh psychology safety or not it it can be quite easily be uh you know figure out uh we can just uh, check a couple of things for uh detecting whether is present in a team or not like um first thing is how often does the manager talk to their employees or all the associates um not only talking about having the one to meetings but also taking the frequent uh, feedbacks from the employees like whether they are feeling safe whether they have their like is their voice being raised like is, is their opinion being take, uh, taken into consideration so mm -hmm. uh, people might not raise these questions in in the meetings but they might raise it to their individual manager that is the first thing that how frequent these one to one meetings are happening and how effective they are second mm -hmm. thing let's say if you are giving any presentation in case you are doing a grooming session or any presentation so always see how many questions follow up questions that you are getting so in case mm -hmm. you are getting a couple of follow up questions either you might not for two reasons either like all the audience or entire members of the teams like they understood entire project entire requirement or either mm -hmm. they're afraid of asking the questions they are embarrassed because i might ask a really silly questions so whenever you are presenting an idea as uh, presenting a requirement of the check how many mm -hmm. follow up questions that you're getting you might not get the uh, questions right after the presentation or after the describing the requirements but mm -hmm. after a certain time how many follow up questions that you're getting so mm -hmm. this this couple of parameters will help you to understand whether my team is comfortable or not the another point is like uh, how well the team is gelled like how many uh, like ownership of the mistakes let's say there is some issue that has been happening how effective mm -hmm. are your retrospectives like how uh, you know how the teams are using this retrospective meetings if they are mm -hmm. able to own their mistakes or like they are pushing this uh, mistakes to each and another if if we see these kind of parameters it means that people are not able to own those mistakes they are feeling like in case i own this mistake definitely there will be some issues with my career or there will be some mistakes right. with my right. race right. so right. all those things these are the couple of parameters which we can consider so yeah for right. judging the cyber safety right. right so i was uh, i was reading uh, a blog somewhere Mm -hmm. And uh, especially for testers, so uh, let's say uh, I, I go to. So we we uh, problem is manifested in a different way when you are a tester that reports to a QE manager, but works in a separate team, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so in in those scenarios, so what as a manager, what I should do is uh, go to that engineering manager where my QET member works and ask them, uh, have has this product or the service that you are developing for, let's say, one year, uh, uh, being challenged? How or the process with which you developed this thing? What was the last time someone really criticized or challenged this thing? Right. Either your process or your product, right. right? And was that person a tester? If the answer is yes, yes. was that person a tester? so calculating like we uh, like we do in uh, uh, when we hire uh, when we see, try to notice the gender ratios in tech right we see right. the talent pool how many cvs right. are we getting uh, right. in in the gender ratio and what is the gender ratio in the team right so you have right. to find those points so in this case the point is if uh, if a process or a product was criticized or challenged let's say 10 times in last 6 months how many right. times was it distributed equally or it is just two or three smart people yeah. in the team who always criticize freely without uh, any fear right right so yeah good points okay uh 7 24 6 minutes so jalak my last uh, last question for you so when you say that uh, we we have to speak no matter what right so i i i think this says uh, this says that uh uh ment mental uh, sorry mental illness conundrum right uh, where let's say somebody is not feeling okay right 
we tell him to cheer up calm down if somebody is not right that that does not that never works right so eventually we have to align the accountability with the authority so the person in authority is accountable for making sure there is psychological safety in the team right and that can be their direct manager or whoever is uh, running the team correct so who do you think is responsible for and how can how can they how can you properly hold someone responsible for maintaining the psychological safety especially to testers um uh, to me it looks like uh, it could be uh, it could be the other way around also but to me it looks like that a manager has a or manager or or the leaders have the have a key re, a key role to play in this uh consider uh, now uh, this is my practical experience when i have been going through uh, this uh, uh this uh, this illness of having a lot of you know uh, the, the thoughts were going into my mind where i was being uh, uh, i have been depressed by other members of the team so uh, I, I somewhere had a trust on my manager that he is going to uh, if, if i share my feedback with him he is going to acknowledge it and work work upon it so uh, so uh, my manager always ensured that the psychological safety is there in place and always you know uh, uh, confirm for me that are you feeling psychological safe now um, but if if i say manager uh, we have uh, we have discussed a lot of points where whatever role manager has to play but on on, on the same front uh, i would say everyone in the team uh, should also be responsible for bringing in psychological safety and why i say is this uh, if you are having any problem you you have to step up and go to the manager and discuss it instead of having uh, instead of going through that uh, you know bringing yourself down and uh, not feeling a psychological safe so it is very important from our point of view also are we are we reporting this to the leaders or or our managers managers can help get rid of this but then yeah. are, are we trying to do that mm -hmm. so uh, of course uh, managers need to understand their uh, reportees uh need to gain their trust need to uh, uh, ha have to uh, address all the all their concerns and mm -hmm. then we need to come up with our uh, problems also we need to report our problems excellent so you are you are saying that both yeah, both so the, the parties responsibility uh, lies yeah. on both yes yes yes, yes. okay let me see if we have any question no questions yet uh, I think we have one. Uh, sorry. So okay. Have, yeah, yeah, I go think ahead. we have one from David Duncan. Chalak statement that you might you must speak out doesn't mean that you have to be insubordinate, does it? The manager is very much the responsible party and by definition must trust the team team as a whole. So Chalak, uh, would you take that? Uh, of course, yes. Thanks for the question, Devin. Um, by this i mean uh, you know sometimes uh, there's an insecurity where where a manager uh, doesn't trust uh, trust the uh, efforts or the uh, uh, you know capabilities of their reportees so uh, 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 this could be a situation where the deadlines have not been met or you know uh, the manager has the fear or the insecurity of the deadlines being not met so there a manager needs to uh, you know have a lot of trust on the employees and when they show that trust you know uh, the product the productivity or comes out uh, comes out from the team uh, like for so, like a small example where you are you, you know just micromanaging your team how how would the um, how would the team react and then uh, you ask your employees to just uh, you know finish your work uh, how much hours of a day you work be it three or four but i i want to finish the work so so this is this is how you know the trust should be right okay any closing remarks chalak and swapnil so yeah as jalak already stated like oh, psychological safety is oh, everyone's responsibility making that environment safe for everyone it's like everyone's responsibility but yes leaders can lead it they can set the priorities like it is the even for us it is very important for us but yeah uh, to make it safe it's everyone's responsibility so yeah i should uh, i would be saying that uh, it is uh, please practice psychological safety because it is very important uh, for somebody's uh, mental well being to feel psychological safe 
we we think of of our physical safety we think of uh, 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 so uh, so uh, how much physical safety is important our, our mental safety is also important most of our times we are spending in, in office we are giving most of our time in office so it's really important uh, that we uh, to ensure that we have a psychological safe um, workplace mm -hmm. for every one of us excellent thank you jhalak and thank you sapneer uh all right thank you so much deepak spapnil and jhalak uh thank you for right, for asking all the right questions that are the need of the hour actually given this pandemic situation and given all the psychological uh stuff that we are going through as testers and as programmers as managers as well as uh, uh as the employees of these uh, and working in the software industry as well thank you so much for all the inputs